What's going on everyone? It's your boy Savvy and welcome back to The Savvy Show. And in today's episode, you guys already know the vibe. It's Friday, Dr. Bob, man. He came out with a new SCP animation and it's time to go balls deep. Yo, this one is SCP-767, True Crime Anomaly. So first time reading this title, man, I'll no cap, like it reminded me of True Crime Podcast that I listen to sometimes. Like, yo, it would be kind of cool if it's similar to like, you know, modern stuff like in the true crime podcast but with a twist with it being an anomaly and not just crazy humans doing dumb shit out there so let's let's hope for the best man but i'm pretty sure this is going to be a juicy one so without all the way if you guys are excited for this reaction please remember to smash that like button if you do enjoy it and also remember to smash that sub button telling you if you keep on stopping by if this is not your first time watching my videos and you guys want to see more hit that red button so you can stay plugged man if you love my reaction style and if you love scp animations Yo, you're home. <laughs> you're literally home. So smash that red button. And also remember, smash that notification button so you guys can stay plugged right when I drop an upload. So, you know, that's just how YouTube works. So remember to smash that notification button. It's like two blocks away from the sub button. So, yo, that all out the way. Shout out to Dr. Bob again. I love his animation style and his storytelling, so I can't wait to dive deep. And yeah, there's nothing left to be said. Let's get this show started. All righty. SCP-767, True Crime Anomaly, Crime Scene Photographs. All righty, let's go, guys. You'll be starting out with cold cases. The police chief tells the detective who has just arrived for his first day at the precinct. Okay. We've got more than enough to keep you busy, so head on down to the archives and get started. The new detective is looking forward to taking on these unsolved Yo. crimes. Cold case Back files. The overlooked and long since forgotten cases is one of his specialties. Oh my and it God. brings him great joy to solve the puzzles that no one else has been able to. He low key looks like Stabler with hair. Have you guys seen um, Law and Order SVU? It's another, you know, old, you know, crime show. He literally looks like Stabler with hair. Bro, Stabler back in the day, but his hairline's not receding in this animation. <laughs> the detective heads to a part of the police station that doesn't look like it sees much foot traffic, where he finds the door labeled Archives. Inside the room, the air is musty, and when the detective sets down his bag on a table, a thick cloud of dust is ejected and makes him sneeze. Damn. He takes out the list of cases he's supposed to be working on and goes to a shelf containing rows and rows of evidence boxes. Let's see it. He pulls one down and starts looking through the files inside. What is that green shell on the corner? Full of police reports, witness statements, crime scene photos, and even bits of evidence. The hell? Looks like a monster. Hours here. pass as the detective goes down his list, looking through box after box, report after report. He finds that it's best to take a cursory survey first and see if anything leaps out at him yeah. before drilling down to start combing through the details. There's a lot of boxes. As he pulls down the last box from his list of cases that the what? chief told him to work on, Isn't that his bag? he notices something. High up on a shelf, nestled among the many identical cardboard boxes, Don't tell me that's his bag. what looks to be a piece of leather luggage. He can't help but wonder what this is doing here in the archives. Is it a piece of evidence from another case that got left here for some reason? Or did someone simply forget their bag after they finished looking through old files? Bro. Whatever the reason it's here, he has a job to do, and investigating this bag isn't on his list. What? You are so dumb. You are really dumb. For real. Okay, this is not the CP Foundation, so he probably doesn't think anything crazy is going on. But honestly, from the, the first sight that we have, I'm going to assume it was another detective that had the same task you had, <laughs> prior to you coming through the doors and he got sucked in the file for <laughs> some dumb shit guys yo this guy's not taking the right precautions but then again he knows he won't be able to focus until he knows what this bag is and what's inside he'll let himself take just a quick peek thank you he's back to work thank you the detective returns to the shelf with the bag it looks like it's been here for a long time there's a layer of dust covering it that's as thick as anything else in the room he takes it down and blows the dust off the bag. He unlatches it, and inside he finds a folder. Uh oh. Is this just another report? But what's it doing here? Maybe they ran out of boxes one day and someone decided to use an old briefcase instead. Nah, Chief. The detective takes out <laughs> nah. the folder and opens it. Just as he suspected, it is another case report. It's only a single page, though, with several photographs paper clipped to it. These might be the photographs. He takes the photos off the report and begins looking through them. They appear to be numbered in order. And the first picture shows a mess of red liquid oh my and chunks of what might be meat or bone. Yeah, burn. bones and meat. The next two show various angles of a badly mutilated corpse. It's been so violently mangled, Holy though, shit. that the victim is barely even recognizable as a human. What the heck the happened to him? The paper clips the photos back to the report and puts it back in the case, 
If this murder only has one page of evidence to work with, then he is classifying it as a revisit after literally everything else in the room is solved kind of case. Bro. The detective goes back to the last box that he was looking through and starts flipping through the case they, files again. He's making some fast time. Something about that leather briefcase and the photos inside won't get out of his mind. Yeah. Maybe there is something there. Without even realizing it, he's suddenly standing over the case again. He takes out the report and starts looking through the pictures once more. Okay. Again, he sees the disfigured corpse that from different angles. Through it. But the fourth picture is completely different. This one shows what looks to be someone's feet, but they're up in the air. Is that As him? They jumped and took a picture of their shoes. There's something wrong with the picture, too. Some kind of odd discoloration around the edges. Don't tell me those are your shoes. Like an error occurred in the development process. Why would this be in a case file? It's tugging at his curiosity. But no, he really shouldn't be spending his time on this. Not on his first day at a new job. Bro. The detective places everything back in the case and puts it back up on the shelf where he found it before deciding to call it a day. That night, he finds that he can't sleep. Okay, Loki swole. He keeps seeing the disfigured face. For no reason. He closes his eyes. <laughs> and why the picture of floating feet? What does it all mean? His mind is racing, trying to make sense of it all. Okay. By the time his alarm starts beeping, the detective realizes that he hasn't slept at all. Damn. Later that morning, the detective is back in the chief's office again. I wonder if it's just the SCP doing some crazy stuff to his mind, or he's just so captivated with the file, he just couldn't sleep. The chief tells him that he looks awful, and asks if the job is getting to him already. The detective does look Holy terrible, shit! But something about the room is making him very uncomfortable. The ceiling feels too low. Like it moved down a foot or two since the last Bro. time he was here. It's all so very dim. Who can operate in such a dark room? He stands up and asks if he can turn on some more lights. And before the chief can answer, he switches on more. The chief squints from the bright fluorescent lights coming on. Oh my God. And tells the detective to get back to work and to make sure he gets some sleep that night. If he can't, then maybe this job isn't for him. Same before it's too late. The detective returns to the archives to pick up where he left off the day before and goes back to looking through the files on his list. But of course, that leather briefcase always seems to be right in his field of view. Bro, I just gotta say, if he comes to work looking like that nowadays, he ain't working, he's getting sent home. <laughs> you guys already know, so I don't, that was just funny. Reaching out to him, begging him to uncover its secrets. Oh my god, it's warning him. That's it, the detective thinks. He has no choice. He has to know what's going on with this file. Let's check it out together, bud. He takes the briefcase down again, opens the report, and starts going through the photos again. Three pictures of a gross corpse check. Picture four showing someone's feet. Nothing new there. Now it's time to finally look at the rest. Okay. The fifth picture is similar to the fourth, but the person's feet look a little closer to the ground. Wait a minute. Are these in reverse order? He looks at the next. This one doesn't have anyone in it. It's a picture of a table, and it looks like there is writing on it. But the writing is very small. What the hell? He leans in close and squints, but he still can't make it out. Yo. He runs to his own bag and searches around until he finds what he was looking for. A magnifying glass. Uh-oh. He goes back to the picture, and with the magnifying glass, he can finally read the writing. It's above you. He snaps his head up. And looks above him. It is him. But nothing is there. And that's where they took the picture or something. Himself. Of course nothing is there. Maybe the chief is right. Maybe something really is getting to him and he isn't cut out for this job. Bro. But still, he needs to learn more. He looks better now. Hmm. Really makes you think. Maybe it was just a lack of, um, animation. Maybe it was just an animation error. I'm assuming it is, because why would he just look better now? He looks at the seventh picture. Oh, now he is. He okay. sees now that he was right. These are definitely in reverse chronological order. In the next picture, he sees whoever took the photos approaching the table in the room. In the tenth photo, he sees them walking through a doorway. Wait, hold up. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, ten photos now? Okay, this guy should be, this shit should be clicking. I don't think there was like even ten photos in this file. There was only like four to begin with. Unless, like, he didn't turn a page and there was, like, more photos. But I don't know. I'll just get kind of a weird feeling about this because, literally, I'll start looking around my surroundings and saying if everything looks the same right now and it's in the photo, bruh, these are these photos just recently got taken. Yo, come on. Click, start. Your brain needs to start clicking. the 11th, he sees them opening the door to the room. <laughs> Finally, he comes to the last photo. It's a photo of the closed door to the room. There's writing on the door. 
and the detective can hardly believe what he is seeing when he reads it. The writing on the door says, Archives. Bro! The detective jumps up and spins around. <clears throat> oh, shit. The room is empty. There's no one here but him. What's going on? Is this some kind of prank? What the heck? He picks up the report the pictures were attached to. There must be some answers in there. The paper appears to be a standard police report. Yo, what is that? The discovery of a homicide. The top of the page lists the address where the murder took place. It's the very place he is now. The police station's address. The murder's him. Next to it is the date. It's impossible, then. The date is... He's the dead body. The days. Davis. Archives can hold untold secrets, and many of those are often quite dangerous, as anyone familiar with the SCP Foundation is already well aware. Rarely is the file in the archive itself the danger. But that is exactly the case with SCP-767, a deadly series of crime scene photos that are anything but what they seem. Explain it to us, Dr. Bob. SCP-767 is the designation for a series of anomalous objects which were recovered from a police department's own archives. They include a series of 12 Polaroid photographs oh. which have been given the designation SCP-767-1 through 12 wow. that appear to be the source of the anomalous properties surrounding the objects. Each photograph is labeled 1 through 12 in the lower left-hand corner though they appear to be labeled in reverse chronological order. Oh. They in reverse. That is, starting with the picture labeled 12, the photos depict a first-person perspective of someone entering a room and examining a table. The Damn. table will have writing on it, which alternates between the iterations of SCP-767, and will either read, It's above you, or, On the ceiling, written with a red substance that appears to be fresh blood. Damn. The next photos continue to be from a first-person perspective and will show the person taking the photos being lifted up into the air above the table with wisps of black smoke visible around the edges of the frame that look at first glance like either photo development issues or damage to the picture. Oh, no, the final bro. three pictures depict a fresh corpse that has been so heavily mutilated by lacerations <laughs> that it is completely unrecognizable. What happened to While him? While the last picture shows a body that appears to have been virtually liquefied in some way with gore and viscera spread around the room the origin of these photos oh is God. unknown, and it's unknown if they were ever taken at all or merely manifested in some way. They're probably manifested. When the photos are taken to a new location and are allowed to remain there for one week, they will change to reflect a room within the building where they are being kept, with the individual portrayed in the photos being an image of the last person to experience the photo's frightening effects. Oh, so that dude's not him. It's not the detective. It was probably the last detective that I assume had the case before this dude. Yo, okay, that makes sense, because it doesn't even look like him at all. More on what those are <coughs> later. The ability of SCP-767 to change based on the location it is in is also present in SCP-767-13 and 14, 14, which are the police reports and the brown leather valise that always accompany the photos. Oh. The police report has an address and date at the top, both of which will somehow change to reflect the current date and location wow. of SCP-767. So it was just a coincidence that they had a similar um, briefcase. Because it seems like that briefcase doesn't just change to any um, person that is the victim's briefcase. That is the briefcase that is part of the, you know, SCP-767-13. SCP so, hmm. Guess I do luck out. While the leather briefcase has a gold monogram on it that will change to whatever the name is of the owner or head of the structure that it is contained in. Hmm. But that is far from where the anomalous properties of SCP-767 end. There's more? Individuals who are exposed to the photographs will experience a wide range of effects that are based on how far into the photo series they look. Those that view SCP-767-1 through 3 will report feeling no special effects, besides okay. the normal reaction one has to seeing a badly mutilated corpse, Dang. most describing the photos as weird or disturbing. That's why Charlie draws you back. Those that view the photos labeled 4 through 6, though, will usually report that they have developed feelings of claustrophobia, with many also reporting a newfound bout of nyctophobia, Sheesh. that is, fear of the dark, or more specifically, a fear of the potential for bad things to happen in the dark. Oh my god. These fears will also vary in intensity based on how many of the photos were viewed. Subjects who are exposed to the 7th, 8th, and 9th photos will feel an overwhelming desire to inspect the ceiling, and most are observed snapping their heads upwards immediately after reading the writing yeah. on the table in the photo. Later and interviews. honestly, I just gotta say, he should have low-key figured it out a lot sooner than he did, especially with the shoes. I think I would have definitely figured it out when I saw the shoes, and looking down is <laughs> my shoes, bro, like, I would have dipped out of there. But, I mean, this is an animation. <laughs> Subjects have described the feeling as instinctual, or as if someone had yelled the words at them like a warning. 
Following this, the subject will experience a sensation of being watched and will usually report having persistent chills. We didn't see that. Those who view the final three photos will appear to suffer a fear-induced paralysis effect when they attempt to move away from the photos. A shadowy, black, effervescent mass will begin to form on the ceiling directly above the subject, which has been designated SCP-767-15, though the presence of this mass has only been reported by in-person witnesses, as it doesn't appear on photographic or video recordings. Damn. Tendrils of the gaseous material will reach down from the mass and grab the affected subject, Yo. lifting them up into the air before violently attacking them. The subject will suffer deep lacerations as the tendrils cut into it before it completely destroys them leaving them as little more than a pool of blood and pieces of flesh. So the crime scene's there. It's in the office. Okay, then why did not the he why didn't the head detective tell this detective, yo, there was a reason or like there was a killing in this office or let's give him prior knowledge like yo. There's a dead body that was here and he was, you know, doing the same job task that you're assigned to right now. What? <laughs> what the hell was going on? I thought the monster like teleported him somewhere else and took the pictures in the other dimension and get, like manifested them here. But knowing that he's getting killed in the crime scene, that's in the photos. It, wow, that's that's a lot. The nature of this dark cloud of gas, where it comes from, or why it engages in this behavior, is currently unknown. And attempts to stop it once it has gotten hold of its victim have only led to those who intervene being pushed away by a powerful force. So people are actually seeing this. Weapons passing harmlessly through the mass. Wait, that doesn't make any sense. He said that this mass is only people is only seen by the victims, right? Or did I did I hear that wrong? But these people are obviously seeing it, right? What? What the heck? In the time since its discovery by the SCP <clears throat> Foundation, multiple other unsolved cases of victims that appear to suffer similar fates have been identified, and investigations into whether they are connected to SCP-767 and the 767-15 entity are ongoing. Hmm. The SCP-767-1 through 12 photos are to be kept inside of the SCP-767-13 report which is itself stored within the brown leather SCP-767-14 valise. Okay. And the entire group is kept at an SCP Foundation Hazardous Items Secure Containment Center. Nice. Due to the little we understand about its nature this should be or safe. origin, this should be the definitely entirety safe. of the anomalous objects that make up SCP-767, including the SCP-767-15 entity, have been classified as Euclid. What? And any access to the objects requires written authorization from at least one Level 4 site administrator. How is that not safe? <laughs> Yo, there's nothing drawing you to the briefcase unless, like, you open it. And especially if you, like, contain it where you're not even getting in the same room, you're not even going to know if it exists or not. Like, I think that's a little reach, making it look clear. I, I think it should be safe. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. I think it's safe. SCP-767 may not be the most dangerous file in the SCP Foundation's archive, mm -hmm. but it may just be the most dangerous literal file. <laughs> there are plenty of <laughs> like surprisingly what they did dangerous objects that can impact you in ways you've never expected, though. Like SCP-1875, the antique chess automaton mm -hmm. that is capable of powerful effects that you have to see to believe. Go watch that file examination right now. And don't forget to subscribe. Bob, Dr. Bob, Bob bro! The next anomaly it's over. The oh, Foundation he's too quick with it. <laughs> Yo. Okay, that was clean. Let me go back. I just want to hear what they said about SCP-767-15. Um, Hold on. Okay. I want to see if only the, pe the, the victims can see three them. photos will appear to suffer a fear-induced paralysis effect when they attempt to move away from the photos. A shadowy, black, effervescent mass will begin to form on the ceiling directly above the subject, which has been designated SCP-767-15, okay. though the presence of this mass has only been reported by in-person witnesses. Ah. It doesn't appear on photographic or video recordings. In-person witnesses. Okay, so it wasn't just the victims, it's people that's witnessing the incident as well wow yep that was a good one guys i i enjoyed it man it was different because it wasn't just something there it wasn't just a monster and we don't even know this entity the mass
which is the one that is killing all these victims. This is this is dope. This is really cool. It is a nice little twist. Dr. Bob hit out the park again, man. This was great. If you guys enjoyed this reaction, please remember to smash that like button. And also smash the sub button if you're not already part of the family and you made it all the way to the end. You should definitely hit it before you dip out. And also smash the notification button so you can stay plugged right when I drop more uploads. So with that all out the way, hope you guys all enjoyed this. And shout out to Dr. Bob again for bringing this beautiful animation to us. And yeah. There's nothing left to be said. And unfortunately, that concludes today's episode. However, I'll catch you guys on the next one.